question which Isaac had. Okay, um, uh, we see certain pastors say, I have blessed this handkerchief, towels, and they give or even sell it to their members. Is this not a diversion from the truth that Jesus taught us? It can be a contrast. Jesus never recommend healing in that method. Okay. Yeah. So Isaac, yeah. Um, uh, one thing is that uh, the Lord is the healer. He's the one who heals. And uh, healing is part of the covenant. Healing is part of, uh, you know, the atonement. We look at the cross. And, and the fact is that the Lord did use unusual methods to heal people, you know, and, and bring deliverance to people. Like, for example, in the book of Acts, we see that, uh, well, um, handkerchiefs used by Paul, you know, on his body, it was uh, placed on people who were demon possessed, and then the demons would leave, right? So we see, uh, we do see in scripture, unusual methods of healing and deliverance. But the focus is, of course, on the Lord who heals. He's the healer, he's the deliverer. So any, um, you know, um, method that we might use as ministers of God, which takes us the focus away from that, I think we should just, uh, you know, stop doing that. If the people are, you know, going to put their faith in the method rather than the person, then I think we should uh, gently correct and guide them back to the person of the Lord Jesus, who's the healer. Yeah. And uh, it not be a distraction. But the fact is that the Lord does use, um, you know, uh, unusual methods to heal. And, uh, yeah, when it comes to, you know, inanimate objects like pieces of clothing and, uh, you know, um, well, uh, when we when we learn about the anointing, we see that, yes, anointing is uh, transferable. We see scripture, uh, you know, for that. But our focus um, should not be on that. It should not be to take people, out, uh, you know, cause people to take their eyes off uh, the Lord Jesus. You're right in that. It should not be a diversion. But uh, but definitely go ahead and minister healing in the in you know and do it in confidence with confidence and do it with the authority that the Lord has given um, because that that is something that we've been anointed to do right uh, Acts chapter ten thirty eight talks about how the Holy uh, how the Lord Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the enemy and that's the same ministry that we have received. Right? And these signs will follow those who believe that they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And Lord might choose to use unusual methods and praise God. Right? He might choose to use maybe you know, handkerchiefs and so on. Or like Peter, um, the people actually brought people out. And uh, when you look at the book of Acts, we see that they place them so that at least the shadow of Peter might fall on them. And why did they do that? Uh, obviously, because of the result that people got healed and right? people got delivered. So uh, we see that happening. So God will choose to use, um, uh, you know, these kind of things. But, um, yeah, we need to be careful. Right. Thank you. Okay. So let's continue then. Um, let's move on to uh, John chapter 14. You know, we looked at John chapter 14 and verse 16. Um, and the Father saying that uh, he will, I mean, the Lord Jesus saying that he will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. So another helper, uh, Allos Parakletos, meaning uh, someone who is just like me, who's apart from me, and who will be there instead of me, right? And helper, you know, he's going to help. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to be the comforter. In other words, he's going to be the one who will come alongside Okay, so that's the picture, someone who comes alongside and um, you know, one who is going to help. Okay, one is going to help you in, in the ways um, and, uh, and lead you, right? So uh, he says in verse 17, um, uh, he is also called the spirit of truth. Okay? The Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth. And uh, the world cannot see him, the world cannot perceive but he will be in you. He will dwell in you, and he will abide in you, right? So that, that's a, uh, you know, that's a beautiful thing. Verse sixteen says he will, he will be in you. He will dwell in you. He will abide with you for 
forever. So it's not going to come and go. He's not going to come and go, but it's going to abide with you forever. That's the promise from the Lord Jesus about the Holy Spirit to all believers. Right? So believe that, receive that. Okay. Uh, verse 26. But the helper, the paracletus, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, what will he do? He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So specifically for the disciples and also for us in today, right? This applies, right? <laughs> that he's going to teach and remind them, remind the disciples of all the things that the Lord Jesus taught. Right? So that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach and mind so so praise god you know we have um, the one who's the author of the scriptures we, we see that all scripture is god breathed or inspired by god so we have him to teach us and to remind us bring to our memory all the things that the lord jesus taught you know what a, what a wonderful uh, ministry the ministry of the holy spirit Okay, we have a question from Rebecca. Is a new tongue, is it a gift of the Holy Spirit or a sign of the Holy Spirit? Okay, um, well, it's both. Okay, um, we see that uh, there are um, uh, the tongues. Uh, the, uh, it, it talks about tongues as a sign for the believer and also tongues, which is a, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it could be, um, it can be both. Right. Um, I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just say that much for your question right now, because we're going to look at it in detail about tongues and uh, all the other, you know, all these things will be clarified. Yeah. yeah? OK. OK. Uh, John chapter 15 and verse 26. Uh, but when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from me, proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So this is what the Holy Spirit will do. He will testify about Jesus. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit, testifying about Jesus, right? Um, uh, so testifying, pointing to Jesus, and reminding us about the words of Jesus, teaching us uh, truth, because he is the spirit of truth. Excuse me. <coughs> OK. Um, then let's turn to uh, John chapter 16 and verse 7 onwards. The Lord is saying, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. <coughs> uh, can I just request one of you to read uh, verses 7 to 13, please? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, something irritating my throat. Maybe some of, uh, one of you can read John 16, verses 17 to 13. Can I read? John yeah, chapter go 16. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. John chapter 16, verse 7 to 13. Yeah. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the word to be uh, prove the world, uh, world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Uh, about sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the uh, prince of the world now stands condemned. Uh, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not uh, speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. 
John chapter 16, verse 7 to 13. Thank you. Thank you, Priya. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, um, so here, the Lord Jesus uh, is talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, another aspect of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, which is conviction. Right? Bringing about conviction in the hearts of people. And he's saying he will convict the world of sin. Right. If something, if someone is doing something which is uh, which is sinful and dabbling in sin, he's saying that the Holy Spirit is the one who brings about that work of conviction, the world of sin, and he will also bring about conviction of righteousness and of judgment. Okay, conviction of judgment. Mm. Verse 13, when the spirit of truth, when he has come, he will guide you into all truth. Everything that is true, everything that is the truth, the Holy Spirit will guide you. Okay, so, so we can depend on the Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth, to guide us into all truth. So we need the ministry of the Holy Spirit. As believers, we are dependent on the Holy Spirit, on the teaching of the Holy Spirit, on the reminding work of the Holy Spirit, and the guiding work of the Holy Spirit into all truth. Okay? He will... He will uh, Whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you of things to come. So another thing, you know, we, okay, the work of conviction is by the Holy Spirit. Uh, he, will, <clears throat> he will guide into all that, in, that is the truth. He will guide us. Which means that um, even if we believe incorrectly, you know, if we have some preconceived notions, he will guide us from error into truth. That is what it means, right? He will guide us into all truth. So praise God for that. All that we have to do is be yielded, be submitted, depend on him. And of course, he is going to quicken the word to us. Of course, he is going to remind us about the words of the Lord Jesus. But he will guide us into all that is the truth. Okay. And another thing that we see here that... <coughs> Sorry, he will tell you of things to come. Okay, which means that the work of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, is also foretelling. You know, we we see the the prophetic coming in, and he he's the one who. <coughs> I'm really sorry, guys. I'm really sorry about that. So he will uh, tell you. Of things to come. Verses 14 and 15 talk about how he will glorify Jesus, he will take off what is the Lord's and he will declare it, and so on. Right? So we see <clears throat> so we see this as the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Can you just excuse me for a minute and yeah, just Really sorry about that. I don't know. What's, uh... Today it's bad. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Zalitoli. Thank you, guys. Okay. Let's um, let's move on. Let's look at um, what is the work of the Holy Spirit in in the death and resurrection. Okay. Of Lord Jesus. So we look at. Uh, um, um, uh, the epistles we look at First Timothy chapter three and verse sixteen. Okay, First Timothy three and verse sixteen. <clears throat> um, and 
without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Okay, talking about the earthly ministry of the Lord, talking about how the work of justification that happened by the Holy Spirit, and he was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in glory. Okay. Let's look at uh, a couple of more verses. Hebrews 9 and verse 14. <clears throat> okay, Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Okay, The blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Through the eternal spirit, through the work of the Holy Spirit, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus offered himself without spot to the Father. Okay, So we see the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you know, um, the encouraging ministry, the uh, um, the way in which he ministered to the Son, so that he offered himself to the Father without spot and blemished as the sacrifice. Right, First Peter three and verse eighteen. Um, we're looking at a lot of uh, scriptures, just to you know, for us to know, you know, the scope of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, Oh, okay, Divya. I'm I'm good now. Yeah, I'm I'm fine. I think I've seen to be okay. Yeah. So for Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So we see the in the work of resurrection, right? Um, he was made alive by the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and. Um, we also read in, uh, I think it's Ephesians, that the, the spirit who brought up the Lord from the dead, the same spirit dwells in us. Right? So we see the mighty work of the Holy Spirit, uh, the powerful work of the Holy Spirit, and it is the same Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Okay, um, John chapter 20 and verse 22. Uh, let's look at the other uh, verses also. So before the uh, ascension, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Okay, John 20. And verse 22. Um, okay, so when he had said this, okay, let's, let, I think this is interesting. Let's read this. <clears throat> then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, <coughs> for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Okay. And uh, we go on to verse 21. So Jesus said to them, Peace to you, as the Father sent me, I also send you. Verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Very interesting. <clears throat> this is after the death and burial and resurrection. So he's meeting the apostles. Um, they were all behind closed doors. He meets them. And he does something. Right? He breathes on them or blows on them and, and, and tells them, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we see that um, uh, you know this is prior to his ascension. So he does something. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. But after, <coughs> after the ascension is when he tells them to wait for the baptism or wait for the Holy Spirit. Um, the same disciples, he asked them to wait in Jerusalem, uh, wait for the work, uh, for another work of the Holy Spirit. So here we can infer and say, okay, that they were born again. Okay, so we'll come back to this, right? We'll, you might have questions. Uh, we'll come back to this again. But in in Acts chapter one and verse eight, he's talking about how 
uh, one verses five to eight is talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how they will be endured with power. And he's asking them to wait specifically in Jerusalem for such an encounter. Okay, uh, so we see that also. Okay, um, Luke chapter 24, um, verses 24 and verse 47, right? <clears throat> so this is the instruction he gives them. Uh, Luke 24, verse 47. Um, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in the name of Jesus to all nations in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry which means wait in the city of Jerusalem un until you are endued or covered with power from on high okay so he's uh, asking them to wait in Jerusalem for something to happen right so this is after his resurrection before his ascension right so he breathes on them um and he's saying receive the holy spirit now he, now you know he's breathed on them and we know that the holy spirit okay if he says receive they've received the holy spirit the holy spirit indwells them to the same disciples he's saying you wait in jerusalem and i will send the promise of the father the promise of the father is again the holy spirit Wait in Jerusalem, and you will be endued with power on high. Okay, so um, some very powerful truths coming here, right? He's talking about uh, the indwelling and the baptism. We know that we have the Holy Spirit when we are born again. But he's also talking, pointing to another encounter or experience or the work of the Spirit saying the Holy Spirit indwells, but here is something, you know, the work of the Holy Spirit. You will be endued with power on high and you will be witnesses. Okay. Same disciples, right? Right. Okay. Acts chapter 1 and verse 2, what we what we read uh, just now. Um, I'm sorry, we, look, we read verse 5, uh, Acts chapter 1 and verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. So um, through the work of the Holy Spirit, he gave them commandments. Uh, he gave the apostles the commandments uh, whom he had chosen. Um, it's talking again about that period between his resurrection and ascension. So we see all this... <clears throat> Uh, specific instructions or teachings about the Holy Spirit by the Lord Jesus. And we see specific references about um, the death, burial, and resurrection uh, of the Lord in which uh, there is mention of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And after the resurrection and prior to his ascension, we see the Lord Jesus doing something, teaching them, giving them specific instructions, referring to, again, the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the disciples. Okay, so it's it's important that we like take note of these things and understand these things. Okay, so any questions before we go on to chapter 5? Okay, chapter 5, I'll take your help. Okay, I'm just going to call out the verses and you can read out the verses and... Uh, um, you know, different people can read out different verses. So before that, any any questions on chapter 4? Okay, so is, is it clear about <clears throat> the fact that the Lord Jesus, when he walked on the earth, you know, he walked in what we can call as sonship glory, okay? He did these signs, this beginning of signs he did and manifested its glory. That's what scripture says. So when we understand the word glory, it uh, you know it's not something fuzzy. It's not something you know just about bright light or whatever. It is about God and what He does, okay. uh, made manifest, meaning display or made aware or made clear. Okay, so that is the glory of God. So when He walked on the earth, you know He manifested His glory. How by some of the things that He did. His teaching, his ministry, his, his whole life right? it talks about the manifestation of the glory of God. 
Okay, so um, so we we need to kind of get a grasp of that because it's um, uh, it's going to throw away certain things, you know, we, because we when we look at the Lord Jesus and His ministry and say, okay, that's the Lord; He can do it, and we exempt ourselves from it, right? We exempt ourselves from it and say, you know, I, I'm human, you know, He's God, but the same Lord turned to the humans and gave that teaching and the command greater things you will do those who believe in me the things that i do you will do also right so uh, a very good exercise would be to go through the gospels and look at what jesus did the way he had compassion the way he forgave the way he uh, lived his life the way he ministered in power the way he delivered and look at that and say lord you said to the one who believes these things he will do also so god i believe and i believe that by the power of this holy spirit that i will do this as well really you know that is what he meant okay that is what he meant that the believer that the disciple okay not just the believer, but the disciple right, will do the works that Jesus did, which is exciting, which is a great privilege. So the Christian life is anything but boring. Yes or no? Anything but boring, right? It can be difficult. It can be, uh, it can be with trials, challenges, but it's an exciting life because the Spirit of God indwells us and He is encouraging us and pointing us to Jesus. And He's saying, This is what He did. He's guiding us into all truth. He's saying, You know, the things that Jesus did, why don't you step up and do it? Right? The authority is given us. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, so so we got a strong uh, grip of that, and um, uh, never lose that, never lose that out, you know, because um, yeah, absolutely exciting life in the spirit, prayer, you know, because the Lord will continue to, you know, uh, lead us into uh, into truth, into liberty, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and freedom. Uh, and uh, authority and over it's an overcoming life right by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you put to death <clears throat> the things of the flesh it's an overcoming life satan will lie and say that it's it's a life of restraints it's a life of do's and don'ts well well actually it's a life of it's a life of freedom where you do the things that god has called you to do and you don't have time to focus on the don'ts right do the things and you're living an exciting life um pleasing him pleasing him bringing delight to his heart you know, that's a that's the greatest thing that we've called to do right okay let's look at next chapter then if there are no questions uh, we look at next chapter which is uh, which is the work of the holy spirit in the book of acts you know um if you look at the book of Acts, it's it's called the uh, it's titled the Acts of the Apostles. Well, uh, somebody somebody mentioned that you know it is yes that is how it is uh, it is mentioned, but actually it is the work of the work of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. Right? Uh, if you read through, it is the work of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. It's the acts of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. Right? So. Uh, the book of Acts, let's look at several references and uh, what uh, what we can glean from that about the, glean from these references uh, about the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, <clears throat> maybe a few of you can read. Um, so let's look at Acts chapter 1, um, verses 5 to 8. Can somebody read that out, please? Acts chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. Acts chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. For John baptized with water, but in few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. 6. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, 
but you will receive power when holy spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth um thank you thanks robert so um so we see that you know this is actually something that the lord jesus already spoke about okay uh, luke chapter uh, 24 talks about that we read that reference luke chapter 24 uh, verses 40, 49 says you know behold i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry in the city of jerusalem right so so these verses uh, are referring to that and again you know the lord jesus saying that um, you know you have heard from me means you remember guys i told you earlier you know i told you earlier uh, this is what you know when i was this is what i told you earlier that john baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the holy spirit now this is an encounter this is an experience um that you'll be baptized with the holy spirit and not many days from now but i need you to wait okay now um, wait uh, in jerusalem okay he says um, but you shall receive power was eight when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth so first thing is saying you shall receive power okay um now power for what okay he goes on to explain you shall be witnesses which means that you will be my witnesses and it you will be witnesses who will be testifying with power and you will be witnesses in jerusalem in judea in samaria and all and the ends of the earth you know the the scope is limitless its scope is going to be global it's not going to be limited locally here in jerusalem there's something that's going to happen uh to you to your life your life is going to change you're going to receive power and you're going to receive power and you are going to be witnesses and and you're going to go to the ends of the earth witnessing about uh, about the gospel you know witnessing about me and that that is what he says right um, so he gives them uh, that instruction Okay, then we see uh, in Acts chapter one and verse sixteen. Let I'll just read this out. Men and brethren, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. So here Peter is referring to um, uh, the, the the Old Testament um, a prophecy about um, about how the Lord would be, um, you know, uh, would be. Uh, uh uh crucified and 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 so on so how concerning judas okay so he's referring to the prophecy uh, in the psalms about this okay um then let's look at uh, acts chapter 2 maybe somebody can read uh, one person can read verses 1 to 4 and somebody can read 17 to 18 and uh, yeah please go ahead yeah chapter 2 verse 1 when the day of pentecost had come they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like violent rushing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting and there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves and they rested on each one of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with one another in tongues as the spirit was giving them utterance Um, okay maybe you can read the uh, 17 and 18 also john um. and it shall be in the last days god says that i will pour forth of my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams even on my born slaves both men and women i will in those days pour forth of my spirit and they shall prophesy okay so we see something amazing happening here it's a fulfillment of the prophecy of prophet joel okay uh, and uh, verses 1 to 4 something supernatural happening now it was a day of pentecost 
and uh, people had actually gathered for the feast of uh, for the feast of first first fruits and the feast of pentecost they were all in jerusalem and it says that the day of pentecost had fully come okay um which means uh, it was the day the feast of pentecost and they were all the disciples were in one accord in one place and suddenly there was something supernatural right there was a sound of a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind it filled the entire house and there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them so it was like as if uh, flames of fire uh, uh, on each of the disciples and uh, <clears throat> something else happened they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance so they began to realize that this was something supernatural because uh, the holy spirit was giving them the utterance or giving them the ability or uh, giving them the words to utter and they were speaking them out um they were began to speak with other tongues okay then we see in uh, verse 17 and 18 the the peter he actually was 14 we see that peter actually stands up and he gives a message and he's referring to prophet joel okay and he's was uh, joel 2 28 29 and he's saying you know this is what was spoken by the prophet joel so um so you can imagine right peter just having had that experience of being filled with the spirit he prayed out in tongues and if you actually read uh, you know verses 5 onwards you see that um, all kinds of reaction right um they're saying you know are these not galileans you know how can they speak in the language that we know so the people had gathered from the neighboring places like it says parthians and medes and elamites and dwelling in mesopotamia judea cappadocia and then uh, egypt and all these places are listed here um cretans and arabs and they were hearing them speak in their language what were they speaking the wonderful works of god so they were amazed and they were uh, perplexed right so uh verse 12 they were amazed they were perplexed and verse 13 talks about you know somewhere also mocking thing they they are full of new wine they were they were you know they they are inebriated they had alcohol now why did they do that you know some of them were saying oh i'm hearing the praises of god in my own language but the others were saying they what they are saying is like blabbering they behaving as if they are drunk okay you see all these things so um so that was the thing but then peter rose up and he clarified and he's saying you know this is not you know it is only the third hour we are not we are not drunk but this is a supernatural work of the holy spirit the supernatural work of god because god said that he will pour out of his spirit on all flesh and these things you know this is what is so he's referring to that he's pointing them back to that okay um verse 38 and 39 Peter finishes uh, the message the sermon and he says repent and each one, every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit so he says you know you need to repent uh, you need to be baptized uh, in the name of Jesus and you will receive the gift of the holy spirit um verse 39 for the promise what what is he referring to he's referring to promise of the father right uh, the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off as many as our lord our god will call so he's saying something very uh, uh, i mean again something very very important he's saying this promise is to you hey, you you who can hear my hear my voice this promise is to you and to your children okay uh, maybe they are not here they may they are they are at home this is this is to them as well right and he says and to all who are afar off who are not here right now right which is referring to us we, we were not there to all who are afar off as many as the lord our god will call 
Okay, so saying this is not restricted to us alone. This is is his fault. You, your children, and as many as our Lord will call. Okay, so uh, again, a supernatural work of <coughs> excuse me, sorry, work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay, maybe somebody can read Acts chapter four, verse eight, and also verse thirty-one. Okay, Acts chapter four and verse eight. Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel. And verse 31, is it? Um, yeah, that's right. 31. Yeah. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Amen. Right. Okay. So we see something here, you know. Um, so in Acts chapter 2, they had this wonderful experience, uh, supernatural experience. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They started pray, praying out in uh, other tongues. And uh, Peter gave this message and uh, people repented. It says that uh, <laughs> um, about 3,000 people were added to the church and so on. Right, we, we see that here in verse uh, chapter 4 and verse 8, we see that, that Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. So which means that, uh, you know, it was not just one filling. You know, there were multiple times when the Holy Spirit would fill his disciples. Okay, multiple times. So we see here, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and he is... Uh, he is addressing some people. You know, this is the same Peter, if you think about it. This is the same Peter who ran away from the same group. Okay, What is that group? If you read verse 5, we see that uh, it came to pass on the next day that the rulers, elders, scribes, the high priest, um, the family of the high priest, they were gathered together at Jerusalem. Okay, And, and they're all there. And they set Peter and John before them. What has happened before Peter and John had actually healed the, the man who was who could not walk, who was sitting at the gate, right? Um, so they, they had healed him, and now they are being, you know, they are being interrogated for that particular thing because it was done in the name of Jesus. And the many people were rejoicing, and they're coming to believe in Jesus. So now this is the group which Peter shied away from, he, you know, he said, I don't even, you know, I, I don't even know. In, in the fear of facing these people, you know, he, he said, I, I don't know who this Jesus is. Now the same Peter is in their midst right there. And they ask, you know, by what power, by what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit, he says, rulers, other people, elders of Israel, and he goes on to say, you know, if you are being judged for a good work by which, you know, this helpless man was healed, uh, let it be made known to you that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man stands before you whole. Okay, so he's very bold, suddenly. This is not the same guy. You know, if you go down to verse 13, see, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, but they are quoting scripture, you know. Verse 11, you know, he, he quotes the scripture, is, you know, the stone which was rejected by you builders has become the chief cornerstone, and so on. They were untrained, uneducated. They marveled. First of all, they were healed. Here they are standing with boldness and uh, and speaking with such boldness. When they saw that, they marveled. They're going, wow, what is happening? <clears throat> and then they come to the realization. This is beautiful. They realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Right. <coughs> 
no arguments <clears throat> nothing at all what can we say there is proof here's the life and here's the teaching and they're saying this is how this man was healed but you know, pointing uh, again of course all this is happening the focus again is on peter filled with the holy spirit so he was uh, filled with the holy spirit he spoke in tongues he was filled with the holy spirit and with boldness he addressed the religious leaders there right and um, verse 31 talks about how when they when they were released they go back they go back and they all gather together they tell them you know this is what happened we were asked not to pray or not to preach in the name of jesus but um, you know this is what they said and uh, they go back and they pray <clears throat> they pray this amazing prayer and uh, to the lord and verse 31 where, when they had prayed the place where they were assembled together was shaken okay um, and they were all filled with the holy spirit and they spoke the word of god with boldness the prayer is also amazing you know uh, they say you know they pray and they, and they say verse 29 lord look on their threats and grant to your servants that will all boldness they may speak your word no that's their prayer they're not saying you know lord you know um keep us safe or you know, anything like that they're saying you know lord this is what they're threatening god but you grant to your servants boldness that they may preach the word with all boldness and um, in verse 30 by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant jesus so preaching with boldness lord uh, and accompanied by the demonstration the miraculous supernatural power of signs and wonders and here it is recorded that when they had prayed the place was shaken okay and they were all filled with the holy spirit and they spoke the word of god with boldness so we see another time that they were all filled with the holy spirit so we see that yes the holy spirit you know just kind of leading up to other uh, you know things uh, about the ministry other aspects of the holy spirit but we see that the holy spirit um, jesus breathed on them they received the holy spirit jesus asked them to wait in jerusalem they were filled with the spirit and after that as well there were multiple times when they were filled with the spirit <clears throat> to the, do the work of the holy spirit they were filled with boldness and uh, to do the work of the holy spirit right okay so we'll stop here and if you have questions you know note them down uh, based on what we have learned so far and we can you know talk about it in the next class okay fine okay thank you so much um god bless you have a great day and we'll catch up again okay bye bye thank you pastor thank you pastor. see you bye bye, bye, -bye. take care bye, -bye.